Hi, my name is Ryan, and today I'm going to be walking you through the Agent Control Panel. Now, the first place that you're going to end up once you log in using the credentials provided by your full service provider is going to be the dashboard. And on the dashboard, it's essentially a summarized view of your tours, your orders, and you also have the ability to comment back and forth with your provider on an order. I'm going to go through each of these sections separately. The first one that we uh, default to is the Tours tab. So on the Tours tab, you have the ability to organize your tours by recently uploaded, by best performing, or if you just want to see all of them, you can click on All Tours. Now, you also have the ability to search for a specific tour. So you can search by MLS number or by property address. And if you have the tour ID, you can also search by that. Now, to edit a tour is very simple. You can do it one of two ways. You can either click right on the title of the tour, and that will take you to the tour editing page, or you can click on this little pencil icon, both of which will take you to the same place. So I'm going to go back for now. Now, the other icons here, you have also a magnifying glass, which allows you to view the tour. So you can click on that right from the dashboard and view the tour. And you also have this little pie-looking icon here. This will allow you to view the traffic report, which I'm going to show you on later, later on in this video. So anyway, that is essentially the gist of the Tours tab. Next, I'm going to move along to the Orders tab on the dashboard. As you can see, I don't have any orders at the moment in my account, but if I did, this is where they would be. And you have basically a couple of text links here that you can kind of organize them if you want to see what status they're in, maybe an uploaded status, one that's scheduled for today, new, work in progress, etc. Or you can just click on this All link as well. Now you can also use this little search icon if you want to search for an order. Um, you could search by address or order number or tour number if you have it. Now next I'm going to click on Comments. So again, I don't have any comments because I don't have any orders, uh, but this area would be where you'd be able to communicate back and forth with the full service provider once you do have an active order. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to these upper tabs up here. And next I'm going to show you how to place an order. So I'm going to click on Orders. The Orders tab is pretty much like the Orders tab that I just showed you on the dashboard. The main difference is that you can actually order a full service tour on this page. So I'm going to show you how to do that here in a minute. So one thing to point out, you also have these text links here where you can organize your tours by various statuses. Now in a minute here I'm going to show you how to order a full service tour. But first I'm going to click on full service tours just to kind of show you the difference between these two. So full service tours, you can also order a full service tour from the screen. There's a button right here on your right. Now the only difference is that on full service tours, your tours that have been completed are actually showing up on this page as well. So again, orders is where the orders are going to show up. And then full service tours is where you actually can, you know, more or less look at the tours and view them and also edit them if you need to. So, which this brings me on to the full service tours tab. Um, you just click on this little edit button here if you want to edit these just like you would on the dashboard. You can also just click on the link if you want to jump right to the editing screen. You can go right there. So I'm going to go ahead and click back. Now, so I'm going to walk you through next. I'm going to walk you through how to actually order a full service tour. So I'm just going to go ahead and order one from this page. To order a tour is very straightforward. You would just simply come in here and fill in all of this information here. So the property ID, of course, would be the MLS number if you have that. I'm going to go ahead and leave that one off, but I'm going to put in some fake information here for you just to give you an example. And of course you want to leave some contact information for them to contact you back if needed. Okay. Now when you get to completion date, you're going to want to click on this little box here. It's going to pop up with a calendar and you're going to want to pick your expected completion date for the tour. So I'm just going to pick the end of the month here, give them a few weeks to work on it. And next you're going to go ahead and select your FSD and click on Next. So once you get to this screen is where you're going to actually choose the package that you want to purchase from your tour provider. 
So keep in mind, your tour provider would have to have these set up beforehand for you to order through the system. Um, so you basically would just go through here, check out what package you want. You can check any additional add-ons you want to add to the package before you proceed to the payment screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and we'll select the full house package here. And I'm going to do an agent voiceover for an add-on here. And I'm going to click on Next. On this screen, you can upload any attachments that you want to provide to the full service provider. So if you have any special instructions or any maybe logos or anything that you would want on the tour, or maybe even a floor plan or something like that if you have it, you could upload this and provide this to the provider. So I don't have anything right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on Next. And as you can see here, you have your new order screen here, just basically showing you what you've ordered, and it shows the agent voiceover, so you can go over all the pricing, make sure everything is okay. And when you're ready to order, you would just simply click on Submit at the top here. And you also have the option to either be invoiced or pay online. So, And again, the, some of this would be set up by the tour provider themselves and how they, uh, how they accept payment. So I'm not going to actually submit this. This is just a sample to show you how to place an order. So I'm going to go ahead and move along to the Profile section next. The Profile page is pretty self-explanatory. You can come in here and you can change your display name. You can change your email address. Uh, you can also edit your password or change your password if you ever feel the need to. Um, you can also add your personal information here, uh, your contact info and so forth. And then you also have the ability to change your, uh, your picture here if you ever need to or upload an image if you don't have one. So that's pretty much the gist of the profile page. So next I'm going to move on to the company section. The company page is also very self-explanatory. You can come in here and you can edit any of your company contact information. Uh, you can also edit your address information down here. And if you need to upload a logo, you can do it here. Or if you need to change one out, you can remove it, and then you can click Browse to add a different logo. So that pretty much concludes the Company section here. Now next I'm going to click on Account. The Account section is also very straightforward. This is just where you can track your payments that you've paid to the full service provider for any tours that you have ordered in the past. So of course I don't have any in here right now for mine. Uh, but this is where they would show up when you do order tours from your tour provider. So next I'm going to go back to the dashboard and we are going to get started. I'm going to show you some of the editing features that you have control over on the tours that your tour provider has done for you. So I'm just going to pick a tour here. Let's do, let's just go ahead and do this Riverview tour here. Once on the tour editing page, uh, you'll see kind of a rundown of the options that you have access to edit on your tour on the right-hand side here. You'll have a little preview option that you can click on View Tour if you just want to view the tour. And you have just kind of a list of some of the panoramas and still photos that are showing up on your tour currently. And at the very bottom here, you'll see there's attributes listed here. Now, the first option I'm going to touch on is going to be the manage management area, basically. Um, you click on Panorama Still Photos to manage just those things. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Once you're in the scene management area, there's a couple different things that you have control over here that I'll show you. So one of the more simple things or basic things you might want to do would be to reorder the scenes. So it's very simple to do that. You would just hold your left click and grab a scene and you can just move it as you wish. So that's pretty much the gist of that. If you want to see all of your pictures in a kind of an easier view for reorganizing, you can turn off these interface settings, which makes it a lot easier to manage your photos. So if you have a lot of photos, you don't have to scroll all the way down the page to, uh, to see them all. So anyway, I'm going to turn that back on. Now, most of these you're probably not going to really mess with unless you have a specific need to. So I'm not really going to get into the details of these uh, as far as the toggles go. Now, you can add a description to a scene if you wish that would display on the tour while the scene is playing through. You can also edit your titles if you wish just by highlighting this, and you could type whatever you want for these. So. Pretty much the gist. There's a couple other things you can do. You can delete your scenes. If you wanted to get rid of a picture, you could click on one of these single scenes and it would delete just that. 
You can also select multiple scenes, and you could delete multiple scenes if you wished. Uh, not a whole lot of reason you'd want to do that, but if you ever need to, you would have that option. So anyway, that's pretty much the gist of the management area for the panorama still photos and videos. So next, I'm going to click on this little shortcut. Uh, you'll see at the top here you have, this is an easy way to get back to the main tour editing page. Um, you have this little house icon, and it kind of shows your pathway here. If you click on the number sign next to the tour number and the address here, that'll take you right back to the tour editing page. So next thing that I'm going to cover here is going to be property information. So I'm going to click on that. The property information section is also very straightforward. This is where you would edit the property information for the tour. So starting at the top here, you can edit the tour title if you wish, and this displays on the tour in a few different locations. You also have the ability to edit the description for the tour. So if you actually drag this little corner box down here, you can read the full paragraph. You can make any edits that you wish, or if there isn't a description currently, of course, you have the ability to add one right here. So below that, you have property type. We don't have the ability to edit this. This is something your tour provider selects for you when they create the tour. And next down, we have status banner. The way that status banner works is you can place a status banner on the tour that displays on the tour when it's loading. Um, and you have a couple different things that you can select from, maybe sold, price reduced, uh, foreclosed, a bunch of different options here so you can just kind of mark your tour if any of these things may apply to that particular tour. Next down, we have location information. Uh, you'll notice that mine is giving me a warning saying that I can't edit the property address because it's been active for more than 20 days. Now, if you ever do notice that you know you get this message and maybe there's a zip code goof up or something like that, you can contact your tour provider and they will be glad to help you out with getting that switched. Uh, you could also contact us and we'll help you with that as well. Next down, we have geolocation. This you only really want to use if you're noticing that the map that shows up when the tour loads is displaying your property in the wrong section on the map. So occasionally Google might have a goof up with the address or maybe they won't it won't be shown at exactly the location that it should be. You can make manual edits to the latitude and longitude here if you need to. So something that's not used that often, but if you need to, that's where it is. Now going down the page, we have attributes. You can select any of these attributes. Uh, you could change the category from single family home to whatever else it may be. Um, and then you have various attributes here that you can fill in and change as you wish. Um, so that's pretty much the gist of the attributes. The loader tag is actually going to be for the beginning of the tour when it loads. Uh, you have a picture of your agent that shows up. So most of the time it's going to default to agent and that's most of the time probably where you're going to want to leave it but maybe if they were you know maybe a, a different type of uh, name that they go by for their title this is where you would change that so going down further down the page here you have the ability to upload an attachment so maybe if you have like a credit application or a loan application uh, you could attach that to the tour and they could download it you also have the ability to add a URL attachment and this will show up in the Tools section of the tour. So you would just put the title of basically what you want the link to say, or the link text, and then you would put the URL to the attachment. So a couple different things you could do with that, but uh, just kind of use your imagination. Main thing to remember, if you make any edits in the Property Information section, as well as any other part of the uh, tour editing uh, pages, you would make sure that you click Save Changes, of course, to save those changes. So that pretty much wraps up property information. Next, I'm going to move right on down here to lead capture. The lead capture section, uh, there's a couple different things that you can do in here. Uh, first off, on the top here, top left corner, you have the ability to privatize a tour. So if you wanted to do that, you would basically password protect the tour. Um, so there's not a lot of instances where this may be applicable, but uh, there are some people that do find a use for it. So to use that, all you would do is just toggle this on, and you would come up with a password for the tour. So pretty much the gist of the private tour. Now, 
onto the lead grabber. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It will create a lead capture form that will pop up on the tour, and you can decide where you want it to pop up. So on the left-hand side here is where you would actually turn on the lead grabber. And you have another option here called the email trapper. This makes it so that the user would be required to fill out an email in order to proceed and view the tour. So this is kind of a more aggressive approach. Some people don't like to do that, but it's just kind of based on what you prefer. So uh, if you wanted to turn that on, of course, just toggle that on. And if you want to turn on the lead grabber, just go ahead and click on Save. And you would select which section of the tour you want it to show up on. So obviously you're not going to turn this on on every single scene, or otherwise you would drive your user completely crazy. So I usually would suggest just picking maybe the first or last scene of the tour, just kind of depending on your personal preference. So to do that, you would toggle it on, and you would go ahead and click on Save. And that's pretty much the gist of the lead grabber. Now, the way that it's going to pop up on the tour here, I'll give you an example. So, tour is going to load. And right before the first scene pops up, you're going to see it pop up here in a minute here. There you go. So, this is where they would fill in their information and click continue to view the tour. So I'm going to close that out, and I'm going to go ahead and shut this off for now. And last but not least, in the lead capture section, you have the ability to send an invitation for somebody to view the tour. Uh, this is very self-explanatory, first name, last, last name, email, and any comments that you wish to send them. And you just click Send Email, and then that will show as coming from your email that shows up under the Profile section. So. That's pretty much the gist of lead capture. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the main page of the tour. And next is going to be amenities. The amenities section is very straightforward. You just simply click on whatever amenities you want to select. And you also have some exterior amenities towards the bottom. And you have appliances, community amenities. And it's pretty much the gist of it. You just check off what you want, and then just make sure to click Save Changes down at the bottom here. So anyway, not much more to say on amenities. Next, I'm going to go on to deliverables. Now, deliverables is essentially a page that you can send various links and or resources to your customer. So maybe if you wanted to send this to maybe one of your buyers, um, you'd be able to do this. Um, starting at the top, you have the branded virtual tour link, which is basically the, the full-blown tour with all the, uh, all the amenities and goodies. You also have the non-branded virtual tour link that is essentially the same thing, but it just doesn't have branding. So this is typically used on MLS boards as they usually won't allow you to have branding on them. Uh, you can toggle these switches on or off if you want to send them to your customer. And down here you have the ability to type in a name, email, and message and send a message with whatever you have basically toggled on. Now, you also have a couple things in here that you can use for websites. Uh, you can basically embed a tour button on a website if you wish. You have the ability to embed a play thumbnail as well that would basically allow them to click to play the tour. Um, they also have a branded virtual tour link for iframes as well as the non-branded. And then next you have your tour gallery. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click on this just to give you an example. The tour gallery is a page that is going to list all of your tours that you've had completed by your tour provider. So this might be a good idea to include maybe in the signature of your email, or if you just wanted to send somebody a list of your current listings with you know, virtual tours attached to them, you can just shoot them over a link to this page. Now, it's pretty straightforward. It shows all of your listings on the map here. And you also have your agent information at the top. And then towards the bottom here, you have uh, basically your listings showing right here, and they can view the virtual tours right from there. So that's pretty much the gist of the My Gallery section. So next, 
I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And you also have this tiny URLs link. So if you want to send somebody a tiny URL to link to the virtual tour, you can do that as well. Keep in mind you have these little pink little buttons here that you can click on any of these if you want to copy these to your clipboard. And then you would just simply paste. So if you wanted to paste it into an email, you can do that. Okay, so next we have individual download links. You can, you can basically send this list of individual download links. This is how it's going to appear to the customer. And then they have the ability to download single images and or panoramas if they wish to. So I'm going to close that out. You can download your interactive virtual tour to your computer as well. Uh, keep in mind this is Windows-based, uh, so it would be an executable file that would have to open up in Windows. Now, you also have the ability to download your high-resolution images. I just compiled a package. Normally there's a button here, kind of like this Compile button. But anyway, you can compile a package, and then you have the ability to download that package. Uh, it'll stay up for 30 days and then it expires, but you always have the ability to come back in and recompile the package if you wish. So that would be for the high resolution images. So for maybe lower resolution images, or if you just need some kind of downsized images, maybe for MLS or you know different purposes, you can type in the width and the height of the pixels of the images that you need them in, and you can click compile, and then our system will actually compile a package of resized images of which you can share with your customers or buyers or whoever it might be. And you can also just download them too if you uh, need them resized and then download them right to your computer. Now at the bottom here, uh, I mentioned these toggles earlier. Basically anything you have toggled on green is going to be sent when you send this email through here. So you type in the name, email, the message, and then you'd click on send. Of course if you don't want to send to certain objects, you would just toggle them off. That's pretty much the gist of that. Going further down the page here, you have eBrochure. Uh, to access the eBrochure, you would just click on this link, and you have a basically a, an internet-friendly uh, brochure that you're able to share with people. And then they can also click on Take the Virtual Tour and so forth. So I'm going to close that out. Further down the page here, you have other embed codes that you can use on websites. Uh, the first one here is JavaScript embed code, and the second one is the HTML embed code. So both of these will work. The one thing to keep in mind is if you want it to be mobile friendly, you would want to use the JavaScript embed code uh, in order for it to play on a mobile device. And at the very bottom here, you have this tour QR code generator. The way that this works is you would just simply type in the width and the height you would like the QR code to, to be. So if I just want to do 300 by 300, just for example, I can click Create, and then I can actually create a QR code that will be exactly that size. So I'm just going to open this just for showing you here. And it looks like it opened up over here in uh, my GIMP program, so it just depends on what you have as your default file viewer. Uh, so that's how that opened. But anyway, you can take that, you can put that on marketing flyers, uh, different types of things uh, you know, for marketing, and that will link to the tour when the person scans the QR code. You also have the ability to regenerate the QR code if you have a need to do that. So that pretty much concludes the deliverables section of the tour editor. So I'm going to scroll back up here, and next I'm going to move into traffic report option. Traffic report options is where you have the ability to control who will receive the traffic report. So by default, you will be automatically subscribed to receive it. If you wish to remove yourself from the traffic report, you can just uncheck this box and click Update. Um, you also have the ability to completely remove the email if you wish. Now, if you want to add a new person to receive it, maybe another agent in the office or maybe even the seller of a property, uh, you just put their email address in here, and then you would select the duration in which they would receive the traffic report. So basically you could do it by uh, once, you know, basically once every week on these days, or you could do it by the first of every month and the 15th of every month if you wish. And then you would just click on Add, and then that would add the recipient to this list here. You also have this button here for sending hit stats to your entire list, uh, just with the click of a button. So in case you want to update everybody in one quick uh, you know, click, you can do that. 
If you ever have a need to clear your hit stats, you can do that here. You just check off which parts of the stats you want cleared, and then you click on Clear. So that's pretty much the gist of Traffic Report. So next, I'm going to go back to the main tour editing page, and I'm going to click on Traffic Report to actually see what the traffic report looks like. So I'm going to click on that. Once on the actual traffic report page, you have various stats that you can look at. Of course, this tour was more active in 2012. It's, a, uh, it's basically a sold property, so it's not active anymore. You can change your weeks that you're looking at here. So you can go week by week and change the stats and look at exactly uh, you know different weeks and so forth. So you have your direct views listed here. You have your referral views here. And then you have your total views you know, listed here as well. So referral views are basically coming from another source, so maybe you linked it on Facebook, uh, it would show there. Um, direct views would be if somebody typed in the URL or just clicked on the link directly and went straight to the tour. Going further down the page here, you have various stats that you can look at. You can look at likes, dislikes, downloads, etc. You also have a spot here where you can check uh, the referrals, so you can kind of see exactly where you're getting your traffic from. So might be showing from some various MLS boards, maybe Facebook, uh, different places where you do share the tour. So that's where that's going to show. You can check your timeline as far as seeing when people are the most active on the tours. That'll show you that. You also have down here you can check and see basically how many views you're getting on certain pictures. So you have different ones that may be getting more views than others. Um, so it's pretty much where you can track that. And then going further down the page here, that was actually for panoramas, the one I was just explaining. But these ones are your still photos. So you can kind of see which still photos are getting more activity than others. So that's pretty much the gist of the traffic report. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. That is going to conclude my training video on the Agent Control Panel. Please keep in mind if you do have any remaining questions after going through this video to contact your full service provider and they will be happy to help you. And I do wish you the best of luck with everything and thank you for watching my training video. Have a great day.